Hello listeners, welcome to our English program podcast Kaleidoscope. Listeners, in our today's program, we have the second part of the talk on the topic law and literature, which is given by Dr. Anagha Baldota, who works as an assistant professor in DES Shri Navalmal Firodia Law College Pune, and she has been in the teaching profession since the year 2011. She has published presented research papers in language law and literature at state national and international levels she has also designed programs for spoken english development of soft skills advocacy skills and parliamentary debate skills she is also an avid traveler and a trekker so let us listen to this talk on the topic law and literature Hello dear folks we opened a novel discussion in last session on relatively modern trained law and literature to continue with the discussion we have to consider one more aspect of language law and literature intersect in their use of language and interpretation legal texts often involve complex language and interpretation much like literary texts exploring how language shapes legal arguments and narratives in literature can shed light on the power dynamics inherent in legal communication in the discipline of law authored by lord denning he quotes when i was called to the bar i had to become proficient with words and i did it by drawing on my reserves of english literature next i had to practice continually as a pianist practices the piano the lawyer should practice the use of words and both in writing and by word of mouth the statement by lord denning further marks the importance of the language in law which can be enhanced through the reading of literature mastering language and the art of advocacy gives birth to a quality lawyer and his successful career law and literature intersect in their use of language and interpretation legal texts often involve complex language and interpretation much like literary texts exploring how language shapes legal arguments and narratives in literature can shed light on the power dynamics inherent in legal communication studying the role of language in shaping courtroom dramas in works like john grisham's a time to kill can offer insights into the persuasive technique used in legal settings thus the kinship between law and and literature is evident in its interpretation reading expression research all kind of methodology as well this relation is most visible as both employ the use of vocabulary and rhetoric they both use human experiences they represent the reality of human world underneath their vocabulary In the world novels are very popular characters are created by the authors who explain their complex emotions they use rhetoric and a logical series of events to create a surprise ending because each piece comes with a different theme line for example analyzing the portrayal of gender roles in legal settings in works like charlotte brontes jen nyer can reveal the gender biases present in the legal practices another example is less miserables by victor hugo in 19th century this masterpiece follows the lives of characters entangled in the legal as well as political turmoil of early 19th century france through the protagonist jean valjean struggles with the justice system including his imprisonment for stealing mere a loaf of bread hugo exposes the flaws and harshness of the legal system under napoleonic law and it sheds light on the socio economic inequalities perpetuated by legal injustice a tale of two cities friends you might be knowing this very popular novel by charles dickens 
19th century novel which was set against the backdrop of French Revolution. Dickens in this novel examines the tumultuous legal and political landscape of late 19th century France and England by contrasting the corrupt legal systems of both the nations as seen in the infamous old belly court scenes in London and revolutionary tribunals at Paris, Dickens highlights the abuse of power and the upheaval of legal norms during times of social unrest. Even the scarlet letter by Nathaniel Hawthorne in 19th century novel, which was set in 17th century America, explores the impact of Puritan legal and moral codes on individuals in colonial America. Through the character of Hester Rining, who is publicly condemned for adultery and forced to wear scarlet letter as punishment, Hawthorne criticizes the rigid and punitive nature of early American legal systems rooted in religious doctrines and social conformity. 20th century work Inherit the Wind by Jeremy Lawrence and Robert E. Lee is inspired by Scope's Monkey trial of 1925. Friends, this play dramatizes the clash between science and fundamentalism in a courtroom setting. Through the fictionalized trial of a teacher charged with teaching evolution in a Tennessee school, the play explores the themes of academic freedom, religious dogma, and evolving legal battles over the teaching of evolution in public schools reflecting the tensions between traditional and modern American legal history. These literary works offer nuanced depictions of historical legal contexts and the evolution of legal systems, revealing the complexities, injustices and socio-political dimensions of legal practices across different times and cultures by examining how authors engage with legal themes and critic legal institutions Readers can easily gain valuable insights into the changing nature of law, justice and governance through the history. Moving ahead, let's go deep into the roots as well as the function of law. Although law and literature are two distinct disciplines, both are human creations with humans and society as their study structure. That's why their lives are so intervened. Also, law and literature have the same purpose. They are both concerned with the interaction between society and culture. Both of them are obligated to idealize people and society. Their primary role is to modify the world of humanity, education, compassion, self-love, healing and humanize are all the functions of both law as well as literature. The law must govern human conduct which if violated has repercussions. People will remember the penalty and then adhere to the rules. As a result, it seeks to keep society secure. While the law is a social science topic to resolve human conflict, if we want to resolve the real problem, we must first understand what people are thinking. More importantly, we must have a high level of empathy and compassion for human beings. We are attempting to explore the upper limit of human nature. This is the fundamental purpose of law and literature. Law and literature both use the same form of explanation. Literature uses literary vocabulary to present the artwork. As its aim, it intends a consistent approach and the execution of the entire framework as a part of the work's artistic merit. Law theories, on the other hand, would follow the importance and significance of profession by following factual, logical and rational dimensions. The importance and uniqueness of literature and law become clear as they are explained solely and in a combination.
both of them discuss intent to achieve their respective goals the both are two distinct vocabularies literature and law literature is a culmination of human kind's inspirations desires and emotions all of which are brought together in this personalized commodity wherein facts and fantasies are beautifully woven it reflects writer's mindfulness in thoughts and style for example the best part of franz kafka's novel the trial which was not the enemies of justice but the fallacy of legal system it emphasizes the significance of a logical structure people can be murdered at any moment if there is no proper justice system we can also say that the primary goal of literature is to build imagination however some of them are based on true tales that have been adapted into novels as well as nowadays into series movies which are literary adaptations literature has a rational aspect to it these classics drew attention to society's difficult to resolve problems they affected their readers their spectators they expressed the writer's desires as well as intentions literature is more than just a storytelling literature reflects human empathy for the harsh and difficult life it is a unique sound when literature is used in the songs of world or the mouths of political parties the newspapers it becomes nothing more than a medium then literariness literature everything ceases to serve its original purpose to avoid this tragic end law and law professionals focus more on facts logic they rely on judgments case studies case laws further in the field of law precedents are also established there are a set of rules or principles binding on a court when deciding succeeding cases with similar facts in other words the court sets a moral ground for certain actions and if not obeyed are penalized every judgment sets a deterrent that can be seen as a moral of whole proceeding a set of rules principles morals set up by the court of law for the betterment of the society by the same token literary texts establish morals towards the end of the story i remember most literary works from children's stories to scholarly works have a moral of the story at the end of it which is actually the most important element of the text in furtherance of law as a literature argument writing is the most important ingredient of both law and literature it is interesting to mark out the amount of writing a lawyer does during a trial like a writer writes various drafts before publishing its final draft a lawyer too drafts various suits contracts agreements before finalizing the final one lawyers probably do more writing than any other professional lawyers have developed their style of writing a formal means of writing which is evolved by them which is used to convey the facts of the case with remarkable precision it is not just about drafting in fact lawyers have to exercise in multiple capacities as authors interpreters advocates orators and sometimes as academicians interpretation of words deeds and person is their major job while arguing a case they often use literary words or literary theory to interpret rules resolutions as well as case studies case laws one such theory is the philosophy of deconstruction propounded by the french philosopher jack derrida in the 1960s Derrida's philosophy of deconstruction is defined by the Cambridge dictionary as the act of breaking something down into its separate parts to understand its meaning to comprehend cases lawyers break down the facts circumstances legal language evidence and respective law to give it a desirable meaning 
lawyers and law students follow the same philosophy of deconstruction to form a better understanding of factual legal issues through reading and decoding the lengthy conspicuous judgments what is judgment judgment is the guideline for the society as large judgments are code of conduct one can understand it only if the reader possesses a multidimensional approach of the subject matter here the multiple dimensions are philosophy psychology sociology economics political science language the former united states supreme court justice benjamin nanthan cardozo wrote an essay called law and literature it is considered among the finest writings in law in this essay justice cardozo emphasized the novelist playwright's way of expressing ideas with a sense of clarity cardozo suggested the same for judges proclaiming that in matters of literary style the sovereign virtue for the judges is clarity clearness to achieve such clarity and expressing the subject matter with precision a multidimensional approach is needed as was asserted by justice cardozo while the theme of various literary works revolves around the law advocates judges as well as various literary works judges are also not away from it they are also tempted to quote literary language literary quotes to make their arguments and judgments more comprehensible and relatable lord hope of craighead deputy president of supreme court of united kingdom had said writing judgments is an art not a science judges at times take the aid of literature to convey the principles of law in 2011 in a writ petition regarding euthanasia which was the case of aruna ramchandra shanbhag versus union of india and others 2011 supreme court case judgment please cite 354 page number justice kadju opened the judgment with a couplet of mirza galib on 18th century urdu poet marte hai arzu mein marte hai arzu mein marne ki maut maut aati hai par aati nahi maut which is loosely translated as oh each minute i die for death to come but death seems to have taken a flight similarly shakespeare not only inspired fellow authors but also judges as his work is most quoted by american judges in the indian sphere in n rangarao and sons versus anil gagand others 2006 page number 32 ptc 15 del justice sanjay kishan call borrowed lines from shakespeare's romeo and juliet for a judgment of an intellectual property right where the products were sold under the identical name by both the petitioner and the defendant he writes what's in name that which we call a rose by any other name would also smell as sweet said william shakespeare now these instances of judges quoting authors and their fond selection of literary language highlight the close kinship between law and literature even justice krishna iyer is known for the use of literary language while authoring his judgments along with this academic relation one more important aspect I must mention here is about intellectual property rights. The relation of literature with modern day law is compelling as the law regulates principle of aspects of literature such as law of copyright. In 1710 the statute of Anne came into force in Great Britain and it changed the dynamics of copyright world. it acknowledged the rights of the authors of published work and since then laws related to copyrights are evolving every piece of literature published has a copyright and if plagiarized it will be categorized as an offense now trademark copyrights patent and conflicts related to these are dominating the literary world as well 
and the concerning literary pieces are published nowadays. In addition to that, cyber and medical forensic are yet more interesting areas of legal edutainment. Legal literature is evolving day by day. Law and literature will provide powerful legal and literary analysis, methodological sophistication and engaging prose as well as theoretically and historical informed work that uncovers relations among legal methods, logics in conjunction with the literary imagination. The series editors seek innovative and interdisciplinary studies of each and every kind, including but not limited to work that examines race, ethnicity, gender, national identity, criminal and civil law, legal procedure and methods, digital media, intellectual property, economic markets and corporate power, while also foregrounding current interpretative methods in the humanities, using these methods as dynamic tools that are themselves subject to scrutiny. Law and literature are eternal entities. Friends, those will rule, regulate the society and will bring peace and harmony in the society. These are the topics which are going to intersect the partnership and its journey will never end. Ultimately, law in its concrete factual and historical sense will be illuminated by means of literary and cultural methodologies. And those methodologies will in turn receive new vitality from their respective counterparts. Friends, let's cherish this kinship. Let's keep the concern, instinct and passion for both law and literature alive with the great literary pieces created by luminaries ranging from Socrates, Plato, Cicero, Chanakya to Dr. Baba Sahib Ambedkar, Fali Nariman, Justice Krishna Iyer. Thank you once again. So listeners, that was the second and the final part of the program, Law and Literature, a talk by Dr. Anagha Baldota. Hope you enjoyed listening to her. We will be back with another interesting program. Until then, thanks for listening and please stay tuned as our next program follows.